Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of To Be or Not To Be, the cheesiest title that has ever been created. <laughs> In the last couple episodes, we talked about how to get from our mundane bees that we're finding out uh, in the wild all the way up to get to our cultivated bees. Um, and we're going to talk how to go a step further today. What I have set up here is basically two lines that are going to lead to shiny bees. We want to find cultivated pure um, princesses, and we're going to breed those with common drones. And we can use our purification method here where we just keep on breeding them and breeding them and breeding them and then analyzing till we get pure cultivated princesses. Now a lot of this I have set up. I'm not sure. I haven't looked through here yet to see if I got what I need. But these uh, look like I got common princess, cultivated drone. Not what I need. Not what I need. Not what I need. So I didn't get any. But what you're looking for is either a noble princess or a diligent princess. And you want to keep on doing this combination of cultivated princess, common drone, over and over until you get those two. The noble princess and a diligent princess. Once you get a noble princess, you can mix it with a cultivated drone. And I, I recommend using pures. And these guys are going to uh, breed, and if you're lucky, you're looking to get this, a majestic princess. You want to do the same kind of purification process from before. Purify them down so it's a pure noble drone and a pure cult... cult I'm sorry, a pure no, noble princess and a pure cultivated drone before you start breeding them. Um, but what you're looking to get out of this line, the noble princess cultivated drone, is a majestic princess. Uh, this one right here. It's going to start producing this dripping comb. Um, at a re reasonably slow rate, actually. They don't produce that much of it. But what you're hoping to get out of this is in here my... Oh, yeah! Our first shiny one, an Imperial. An Imperial Queen and an Imperial Drone. Once you have those guys, these will consistently produce your dripping combs. You want to shove your frames in here. I haven't in these yet because I just set these up. But you want to keep frames in here so you get the highest yield possible out of it. Um... Now, on the other line, and we'll go into what you're getting out of these, these are also going to produce uh, this royal jelly. So you're going to get dripping comb and royal jelly from the industrial line. Now, on the other side, if you get the diligent princess, you want to purify that the same way, and you're going to mix it with a cultivated drone. Um, these guys, you're hoping to get an unwary princess. You mix that with a diligent drone. Basically, you're taking the higher level princess and mixing it with the drone of one step below. And you're, you're going to want to purify these out each time, just to reduce the chance that you're going to have it revert back to the lower stage. But the Unwary Princess and Diligent Drone, and these are pretty low mutation chances, so if you don't get it, you know, your first 10 or 15 times, don't get discouraged, just keep on trying. Eventually, you're going to get yourself an Industrious. An Industrious Princess, Industrious Drone, you're going to start producing, like crazy, these Stringy Combs and Pollen. And I'm going to run back up to my house here, and I'll show you what we're going to use these guys for. Just pop up on this machinery. I hope I have coal. I forgot to check if I had any coal before. Oh, you for beeswax. Let's see if I have any coal in this guy. I do, I do. Cool. So, the dripping comb, when you spin it up, is going to produce uh, two things for you. You're going to get honey and honeydew. Um, honey, we already know what we're using that for, but let's just look through the honeydew real quick. Oops. Uh, uses. Honeydew can make glycerine melons, uh, and, and is used in ambrosia. Um, you also need that royal jelly for ambrosia, and ambrosia is an amazing, amazing food. It's basically golden apple plus. So, if you get those, uh, producing like crazy, you can, uh, just dine on ambrosia at all times. Um, it can also make dissipation charges in the carpenter. I'm actually not sure what those are. I'd have to double check. Uh, and obviously you can create it. You can squeeze it and you get a decent amount of honey out of it. Okay, guys. Sorry about that. My video card crashed. Uh, I should be getting a new one really sh soon. Thanks to uh, donations from all my viewers. Uh, I really appreciate that from everyone. Just want to take a moment to say that. But moving on. In a fermenter, you can use it to make short mead. Um, and that's pretty much what we got with that. Royal Jelly, which is our other byproduct, um, you can use to make scented paneling. And these are used, uh, to make alvearies, which we'll be going into those in a later episode. They basically let you set up bees in temperatures they normally wouldn't work at. 
Um, they can make dissipation. Well, they're part of dissipation charges. And uh, they're also a key ingredient in ambrosia. So there we go. We're going to toss in the stringy comb now. Now from the stringy comb, uh, from the industrious line, we get stringy comb and we get pollen. Now stringy comb is important because it's going to produce um, propolis for us, which is one of those rather key things for a lot of other forestry deals. Wait till this pops out. Now other things can give you propolis. You can also get propolis from um, as a byproduct from squeezing honey. But this is the most surefire way to get it. So we're going to take our propolis. We'll look through the uses of that real quick. Uh, it with pollen, which you also get from the industrious, can make slime balls. And the Batomius peat, and I'm probably butchering that, uh, is made with propolis. And this is basically super peat. I mean, it's producing a ton more energy. And it can also be used with transport pipes to make apiaris pipes. We can also uh, use propolis in everything dealing with the forestry mailing system. It needs to be used for the letters. And we can make our stained glass with it in the thermionic fabricator. All the different colors. We can obviously create it. Uh, it can be centrifuged into sticky resin if you're running low on that. So, I mean, if you have a decent amount of industrious bees producing uh, using the beekeeper program, you can just have tons of sticky resin and completely forego a rubber farm. Now, the pollen, the other thing we're getting from here, can be used to make catalyst. And this is basically forestry, um, if I'm remembering correctly, it's a forestry fertilizer. Um, and it can be used to make, it's part of the scented paneling. So we want to get that royal jelly and the pollen. Having both of those lines of bees going is going to make our alviaries, which, as I said, we'll get to that in the uh, episode soon. Uh, iodine capsule, which, if I'm correct, I think that's for the rainmaker. But yeah, that's uh, our uses for pollen. So that's why we'd want to work on making these lines of bees. Um, I think that's all we're going to be going over in this. In the next one, we're going to be talking about two more lines of bees. We're going to be talking about our demonic line. So basically, our hell bees. We're going to have to be descending into the nether. Oh, it's getting kind of late. Um... So I have to set up a little base in the nether to show you guys how all the uh, hell bees work. And we're going to be talking about the tropical bees, which is where we can get our silk so we can make apiarist clothes so that the hell bees and such not can't sting us. But yeah, I want to thank you all for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in, in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. And yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe. Um, and likes and favorites and sharing really help me out. I will see you next time, guys.